Okay. Um, I was asked a while ago to give sort of an uh, overview or something about that, like of my understanding of cladistics or phylogenetics, because I was like, well, oh, Linnaean taxonomy is terrible. I don't like it. And, well, I'm not sure if I actually said that in the video, but more specifically I was talking about the word species and my the fact that I don't really like it because it doesn't convey a lot of information. Uh, at least not whenever you're trying to talk about things in a sort of very specific way. When you're trying to talk, well, where does speciation occur? What makes so many different species, etc. Um, also, I was asked to comment on a video that Aaron Ra made called Turns Out We Did Come From Monkeys. I don't know why this was flagged by, I don't know, idiots. But it was. So that's why it's been uh, reposted by a couple people. I'm going to put a link in the sidebar to one of the... Uh, mirrors of it, so that people have some idea of what I'm talking about here if they care to. It's, um, it's a pretty good video. It talks about uh, how when you look at things from the sort of cladistic point of view, it's very clear that people did in fact come from monkeys. This isn't to say we did not come from apes, rather that we came from apes and we also came from monkeys. Um, and this is what I'm going to be talking about with cladistics. So, the idea of cladistics is to create a uh, sort of a tree structure that we're all very familiar with, where different branchings represent uh, branchings between species, and with each branching, if you follow a branch, everything in that given branch is going to be more related to other things in that branch than to anything else in the tree. And this is going to hold true no matter what branch you cut, no matter where you look. Um, if you take into computer science or graph theory, you can think of it as a, a hierarchical uh, directed graph where um, you go from the root node out, and from there, any given subtree of your, it's also, I'm sorry, hierarchical acyclic directed graph. I think that covers all of its uh, attributes. But as you go out, any subtree is going to be, a, it's going to hold all these, uh, what's the word, properties are going to hold true for it. Um, and this is kind of an important way, this is kind of an important thing to think about, at least for some people, depending on what you're doing with this, uh, these evolutionary relationships, but I'm not going to go into that. Instead, I'm going to talk about um, the idea of naming individual branchings. Um, rather than naming things in terms of like a family or a genus or something like that, which is nice because you're, you're grouping things and naming them uh, for some relationship to one another, here what we're doing is we're actually talking about the, the evolutionary relationship between things based on genetic evidence, usually, and saying that, well, these things are more related, these two things are more related than this third thing. Um, and you, you compare all three of them, you figure out which two are more related than the other, and the one that was less related, therefore, had to have branched earlier than the other two. This uh, gives you this huge branch diagram. Um, this was uh, given to me in my uh, first evolutionary biology class uh, some years ago. I don't know how well you can see this, but as you can see, start at the bottom here, branches, you reach these uh, letters in some case where you don't have terminal ends. And the letters correspond to these letters, which then further show branching. Um, this whole diagram specifically only talks about uh, multicellular organisms. But the idea is the same. I, um, see, I mean, you go down one of these specific branches, and you can get as specific as you want. Um, where, where you can start talking about, well, all of these things are some crazy name I don't really want to pronounce on this video because it will be mostly meaningless to most of us. Um, but the point is, you can look at any set of organisms and see their evolutionary relationships uh, where they branched relative to other things, whether they branched before or after some other group took off, and uh, therefore you, you sort of start to understand the, the evolutionary development of species. Um, and that, of course, goes along with the relatedness, which is what we're measuring. Um, clearly this is superior because you don't end up with these weird terms like superfamily and subfamily and all of these... Uh, added layers that you get in a Linnaean classification system where you have a static number of branches. Instead, when you have a, uh, this mobile tree structure, what you do is you, you can always create uh, new branchings with uh, species somewhere other than 
they they originally were. There's no limitation to it. There's no uh, set number of layers. There's no uh, none of that. And what you end up with is you end up with the real representation of their genetic similarity. Now, since we name uh, branches in many cases, in many cases, as Aaron Ross said, I think very well. You know, nobody complains that humans are members of uh, chordata. You know, we're all chordates. We have uh, spinal cords. I believe that's what it means. Uh, <laughs> Similarly, apes are monkeys and humans are apes, and therefore humans also came from monkeys. It's because everything in a given branch belongs to that branch and belongs to that classification, you go from the less specific to the more specific. Um, if you go to much less specificity, yes, we are a member of a clade that is labeled as monkeys. Um, it's just that simple. Apes are also part of this clade that is labeled as monkeys, as they must be since we are part of the clade that is labeled as apes. Um, and so, we did come from monkeys, just not as recently as we came from apes. Um, as uh, that, That's the way I think of it anyway. Um, and the reason for this is you have the branching with old world and new world monkeys where old world monkeys are uh, cons consistently, or I shouldn't say consistently, but sometimes called old world primates uh, in an attempt to not call apes monkeys, but uh, this is kind of silly because you have a form below that where the, 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 this ancestor that is shared by old world and new world monkeys is clearly classified as a monkey. And if you have this basal form is clearly classified as a monkey, then everything from it is a derivative of a monkey. Um, and the way I think about this is, uh, like Aaron Ross says in his video, you can't get two Romance languages or two uh, Latin-based languages from a non-Latin-based language. Um, Instead, you get Latin-based languages from a Latin-based language. It's just the way it works. You're not going to end up with a non-monkey, then have it uh, diverge into two groups where both groups are monkeys. You do not diverge into two things that are the same classification. You can diverge into two things that are going to share characteristics of the original thing you diverge from, but um, they're not going to diverge into the same thing. That makes no logical sense whatsoever. You cannot have two groups where the thing you started with wasn't a monkey and then both sides turned into monkeys. That's nonsense um, in a cladistic, from a cladistic standpoint. Um, well, really from any standpoint. I can't, I can't think of how that would make sense. So the point is, because we have a basal form that is a monkey, both Old World and New World monkeys are monkeys. Therefore, apes belong to a clade that is monkeys. Therefore, humans belong to a clade that is both apes and, less specifically, a clade that is monkeys. Similarly, we also belong to a clade that makes us chordates, a clade that makes us uh, bilateria, uh, bilaterally symmetric. Um, and so, sure, yeah, we came from monkeys, um, just much less recently than we came from apes. Um, apes also came from monkeys, and you, therefore you could think of humans as being a member of the monkey clade, much like apes are. And that's that's really what it's trying to say here. It's saying, when you look at these basal forms, you realize that humans are part of this whole lineage that can be traced back, again, like I said, to chordata, to deuterostoma, to bilateria, to eumetazoa. Um, you know, all the way back to the beginning. We are all of these things. Most specifically, we are human. Uh, much less, less specifically, we're apes, and much, much less specifically, we're monkeys. But um, that's just the way it goes when you're looking at uh, the sort of clade representation where you're naming branches, not just uh, the species at the very end, or the leaf nodes, if you, again, are thinking of this in terms of graph theory. Anyway, hopefully that made some sense uh, and wasn't too terribly long, or at least didn't go over time. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask your questions, and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, if you want to talk about sort of the math that's used to uh, separate clades into different groups, let me know. I can answer questions like that, I think, uh, with uh, some accuracy, because that's more my specialty than actually what I've just talked about. But um, yeah, anyway, the idea. Cladistics, it's a uh, genetic-based uh, grouping of uh, 
critters based on their evolutionary relationships rather than just uh, sort of morphological traits. That is, instead of just looking at their physical characteristics, saying these are similar, these are similar, we're actually looking at the genetic evidence for where different species diverge from one another. And uh, it's more specific, it's more flexible, and it's more accurate. And those are the reasons why I, I favor it over uh, Linnaean taxonomy or anything like that.